All right. Well, I want to finish up with uh, artificial intelligence today, AIs. Uh, the last of the topics is uh, the nav mesh. Let me get a share screen going here. So uh, what the nav mesh is a pretty cool tool that provides uh, a way to have your AIs navigate on the landscape. That is not just a flat plane with no obstacles, but they'll, they'll be able to figure out how to get from one point to another on a terrain where there are certain parts of the terrain that are uh, uh, not accessible to them because it's too steep or because they're walls or whatever. And they'll find the shortest distance between any two points staying on the nav mesh. Um, uh, it, it also allows uh, uh, for non-stationary obstacles, obstacle doors that can open and close and uh, let, let the uh, character through. Um, and nav meshes are really pretty easy to use, but there are, of course, uh, gotchas. So um, the first step of using a nav mesh is to generate a nav mesh. Um, uh, we'll, um, we need to open the navigation view. Uh, the navigation view is one of the pull downs that we get from our window here the, under, uh, under AI navigation. And so this is the navigation view. And I've already baked a nav mesh on it and it's showing here with the different colors that indicate uh, various things that we'll talk about as we go along here. Um, the the uh, navigation view has these four tabs, agents, uh, which doesn't really do anything unless you download these extra tools, the advanced nav mesh API uh, indicated below here. Um, but it has areas, bake, and objects. Objects is where we select the things in the scene that we want to participate in the nav mesh. Uh, uh, we have uh, a choice here of everything, uh, mesh renders or terrains. Um, I only have a bunch of planes in here. These are nav mesh renders, so they all show up when I click the uh, mesh renders, there are no terrain, so nothing shows up there. Or I can select everything in the scene. Uh, uh, here, I'll probably pick the uh, uh, mesh renders. Um, once we've selected everything that we want to navigate on, uh, we need to check them to be nav mesh navigation static. Um, there's also an option for an off mesh link. Um, uh, that's an advanced feature. We'll talk about that some other time. Um, but uh, the uh, in the bake here, um, we have these uh, off mesh links. We're not going to pay any attention to that. Um, we have uh, uh, for areas, we have different uh, costs of moving across these areas. Uh, by default, we get a not walkable, which is an area that the agent cannot go. We get walkable that has a cost of one and we get jumping that has a cost of two. And we have a whole bunch of other user definable uh, costs that we can name and then uh, assign different costs to. Um, the cost of a path uh, is used in the nav mesh calculation to figure out how to get from here to there. Uh, it will in general find a path that minimizes the cost. So it'll add up the cost of crossing all the different areas. And if there's one area that has a particularly high cost, it would choose a longer path through a lower cost area to get there. 
Um, so this gives us a lot of control over uh, designing our world for our characters. Uh, you, you can uh, make a, a character favor a particular route that goes over easier ground, but uh, they might, they would be willing to detour through a higher cost area uh, to avoid a long trip around on the easier terrain. Um, if you're designing it uh, to, to model the risk, uh, uh, you might have areas that your characters want to stay away from because there are bad things in that area, thieves or snakes or whatever. Um, uh, stealth characters might uh, want to avoid uh, cameras and guard patrol routes, so you would provide them with an easier path that avoided these dangerous areas. Uh, uh, attack forces might uh, want to stay close to walls uh, or uh, 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 staying under cover, or you might just be making like damage areas, areas where there's fire or electrified floors or pools of acid or lava or whatever. Uh, and these would normally be avoided, but uh, uh, if there were no other way or it was shorter, less costly to cross the lava lake to get to some place that might happen. So the bake tab is uh, where we uh, we bake it. This is similar to baking lighting. Uh, we uh, this is a pre-computed thing that is done uh, 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 before the game is running, uh, and there are a number of different settings on the bake. How big our character is? It's its radius, how big a step it can step up over, and how steep a slope it can navigate. Uh, and uh, uh, these all uh, uh, affect what area will be uh, deemed walkable by the nav mesh. Um, the, uh, uh, once you've got those set appropriately, uh, you can just press the bake button and uh, it will bake it and uh, you can see this, you can see the result of your baking in the scene view and you can also see it in the game view if you have gizmos turned on and the nav mesh uh, agent selected. If we have other objects, I, I think it might disappear if, if this is selected. If we're in the inspector, it goes away. So um, the nav mesh is colored. Uh, they're walkable and unwalkable areas. Uh, here in this case, the uh, uh, it can't go near the edge. Uh, that's an unwalkable area. Uh, uh, but it can go up the center region that's considered to be walkable. So let me just run this so that you can see this thing in action. Uh, it has a destination that's somewhere up the ramp that it has to go to. It's got a path. It's uh, uh, navigating amongst these nav mesh static objects. Uh, it's, uh, that's a nav mesh obstacle. It uh, goes up the ramp, uh, makes a laborious turn, and heads up to its destination, this target object that it's going to. Um, so the, um, to, to set this up, we have to, of course, make a character that is equipped to use the nav mesh. And this is done by putting a nav mesh agent component on the character that we want it to move. Um, nav mesh is very simple, as simple as setting the desired destination point, a vector three position in the world or a transform, uh, and the nav mesh agent handles everything from there on in. Uh, so uh, to our character, we need to add a nav mesh uh, agent. Here's our nav mesh agent. Here's our nav mesh agent that has the nav mesh agent component attached to it. 
Uh, and there are a number of different obstacle or uh, options here that we'll talk about, one of which is humanoid. That's the kind of character that we're using here. Um, so uh, having added that, uh, the, uh, the properties include the, uh, the uh, agent's radius, uh, 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 the uh, well, we define the radius and height in the, in the, uh, the bake options, um, but the radius is how wide the agent is, as in the height is how high a ceiling it can pass underneath. Uh, so you could have low hanging branches and so forth that would prevent the character from walking under that area. Um, the, uh, often when we're setting up characters, the uh, game object's anchor point doesn't uh, neatly match with the base of the cylinder, the upright cylinder uh, that is the agent. Uh, uh, and that cylinder is the thing that moves our character around. That's the thing that follows the nav mesh path. Uh, and we want that cylinder's bottom to as closely approximate the bottom at the anchor point of our character. And, and there's an offset, a base offset here that we can use to adjust that. Now the path calculated is a sequence of waypoints, not unlike the waypoints that we uh, had before. Um, they're technically connected by a straight line uh, that denotes the shortest path, but um, um, the path that it will follow will not be a scrupulous straight line path because we get to specify the speed that the nav mesh agent uh, travels, the acceleration, which is basically how fast it gets up to speed, and the angular speed, which is how fast it turns. So you saw when we played this little thing, it sometimes had some difficulty getting through some of the different uh, uh, areas here because it could only turn uh, a, a certain rapidity uh, and it accelerates at a certain speed and uh, it takes it a while to get through these different obstacles. Um, the agent has this gradual acceleration set by the acceleration and it has a limit on its turn rate. And it also doesn't stop precisely on the target point. So in many cases, because it can't turn fast enough, it will overshoot the target, turn around, try and reach it again from the other side. And this ends up with the thing kind of orbiting around uh, uh, the uh, target point. Um, um, to handle this, we have something called a stopping distance and an auto braking property. Uh, with the stopping distance, once the agent gets within that distance of the target, it assumes that it's reached its destination. This is similar to the proximity that we define in our uh, uh, waypoint situation. Uh, with auto braking on, the agent will slow down automatically as it gets close to its target. Uh, this lets it uh, turn in a tighter circle, and so it uh, is less likely to orbit. Um, as, as it moves around, it avoids fixed obstacles as well as other agents, uh, and it has a, a, a quality setting uh, that uh, gives it a hint to the navigation system how accurately uh, to avoid things, uh, low quality, uh, may sometimes allow the uh, character to move outside the nav mesh. Uh, but of course, as with anything good, uh, higher quality uh, takes more computer cycles. Um, the avoidance priority determines how the agent uh, interacts with other agents. Uh, the agent with the larger priority number yields to the other one, uh, 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 the, the those with lower priority numbers kind of have uh, right of way. I think I might have told you that with the waypoint, uh, and, and that's not correct. I don't think the waypoint actually does that. 